Hello and welcome to the TJ Games channel. Today I'm going to start by looking at some of my Atari hardware that I've laid out together maybe for the first time all on one table. So first of all this is an Atari 800XL. Uh, this is not my original machine but one of the ones that I found on eBay over the last few years at a decent price. Uh, this is a Latter Revision E power machine and um, this one uh, could do with a little bit of TLC because the case is a little yellowing there, a couple of scratches. After acquiring a couple of additional 800XLs I decided I wanted to go back to where it all began so I bought myself a 2600 again from eBay. Uh, this one is a light sixer, so it's not quite the absolute original 2600, or VCS as it was originally known, but it's a very nice example nevertheless. As these originally had only analog RF output, I've modded it for composite output, so it can be used now with semi-modern televisions. So after acquiring those units, I took a liking to the 600XL, because I really loved the form factor of that machine. It's a little bit slimmer than the 800XL and today it's quite easy to upgrade past its original 16KB RAM limitation uh, with a 64KB followed by an ultimate 1MB upgrade. It can now do everything my 800XL can do in a slightly smaller case. Now unfortunately the original badge from this machine was a little bit damaged so I bought an aftermarket badge which is not perfect because it kind of sticks up a bit unfortunately uh, but beside that it's a pretty nice looking machine and I can always adjust that later if I wanted to. So after acquiring those 8-bit machines, I decided I would like to revisit my ST days as well. So I acquired this machine, or parts of it rather, because uh, I ordered myself a 1040 STFM, but unfortunately the case was destroyed in transit. Um, I did manage to negotiate with the person that sent it to me to get an appropriate discount after the fact, because the main board was fine, but yeah, the case was totally trashed. A little while later, I was able to get hold of another ST, a 520 STFM, quite cheaply. So I decided to transfer the 1040 main board and other components into that case and switch the badge to make it what I have here. This is now very similar to what I had from my childhood and teenage years, as I used to have a 520 STFM, which I later added an aftermarket upgrade to get to the one megabyte. So the most important thing I'd really like to convey from this part of the video is when shipping or receiving retro computer equipment, it's super important to ask their package properly. So that means plenty of bubble wrap and in a box where it won't rattle around. Unlike buying modern products, it's not just about avoiding the hassle of returns, but it's about avoiding the senseless damage to what are ultimately pieces of history. Okay, off my soapbox, moving on. So I'm really pleased to have been able to acquire and serve some great examples of machines I owned, or in the case of the 2600, that I knew uh, from my childhood. Uh, more recently, though, I also took an interest in the Atari 7800, a machine that I didn't know a lot about at the time, but I was quite intrigued when I read more about it, and it came out a similar time frame to the Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES. Therefore, it tried to compete with that, maybe not that successfully, but as it's one of the last Atari 8-bit machines, I wanted to own one of these too. Again, I performed a video mod so that I can use it on a more recent screen, and I don't have to uh, put up with the default RF aerial lead output on an old television. So, these are the majority of my Atari machines, some of which I've spoken about previously, and others that I may look at in more detail in later videos. But the reason for talking about hardware here is that there's one Atari machine that I've really, really wanted to own, it's become a little bit more difficult to get a good example at a price I was willing to pay. The explosion of interest in retro computing over recent years has really pushed prices up, but I was fortunate to do pretty well on the prices for everything you've seen here. However, I really don't like throwing away too much money. Recently though, I saw something come up on eBay that I thought I'd investigate. Okay, so we bought something from eBay. Um, thought we'd do the unboxing here on video uh, just to see how well packed and the uh, condition whether it was as described so let's go right. what have we got here then okay we got some good packaging that's quite a lot of bubble wrap there um, let's see what we've got on the top. Um, might be some accessories that we may or may not have uh, been actually expecting. Wow, it's a pretty old cartridge there. And look, I was uh, unsure 
whether this was going to come with everything, but um, yeah, that's going to be handy. Do you know what it is yet? No, that's very unpolitically correct, isn't it? No, thinking about it, okay, let's leave that one. Okay, what we got here, we have quite an ancient power supply wall, yikes. Um, I have to uh, search up on uh, that one before we attempt to use it, uh, just to make sure this is totally safe. I thought it was more the um, X 800XL power supplies in got ones that were bad, but yeah, I'm not sure about this one. Um, we'll do some investigation, which is going to slow me down a little bit, but you know, it's got to be done. Don't want to damage stuff any more than they may be already. Okay, let's put that to one side. Uh, okay, we have a little packet of something. What's he given me in here? Oh, wow. Okay, that's quite interesting. I'm, I'm wondering if that's uh, come as part of the original documentation. Yeah. So this, this is actually boding quite well, some of the bits and bobs that we have in here. This looks pretty uh, like it's going to be quite complete, I think. He did say he was buying specific packaging, probably because I paid a reasonable amount for this. But if it works, it's been worth it. <laughs> a lot of bubble wrap. He wasn't messing about. I like this. So you really need to pack retro computing equipment very, very well as the plastic goes pretty brittle. So, how's that showing on camera? First little look there. What is it? Most of you probably have a pretty good idea. Just carefully, a little bit more wrap to come out. Getting a cable there because I believe the um, aerial lead is permanently connected on this unit. And wow! Okay, now that's an interesting colour. Mm, looking at the base, that is what it's supposed to be, I guess. But that has, wow, that's aged over time. To be expected. And we can try and retrobrite this. But, in terms of the condition of the case, apart from discoloration, I'm pretty pleased with that. That looks really... Nice. There is no chips in anything, no cracks. I'm quite impressed with that. I'm not sure how well focused this camera is, so let's just very carefully put that there on the corner and uh, just take a, a closer look here. Knowing me, I could really easily knock things over here, so that's just uh, so there we go. That's what we have an Atari 800. So, my first machine was an 800XL. This is an earlier machine, obviously. I believe it came out after the 400 which had the uh, less RAM and it had the sort of membrane keyboard. This has, um, you know, a good quality by the looks of it. I'm not sure if there's many variations, but yeah, that's, that's a nice keyboard. That's uh, more similar to the XL keyboard. That's a Tari button there. That's something that uh, the new revision doesn't have. Start, select, option, reset. There's the power light. So let's um, see if we can open this up very carefully. Cartridge slots. OK. 
okay. So that looks, yeah, it's okay. I mean, not too dirty in there. It's a bit of discoloration on the aluminium, but yeah, you know, <laughs> it's going to be. This is a very, very old machine. Um, and that opens. That is just nice. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great hinged mechanism. I'm just being so careful here because the plastic, it, it feels okay, but, you know, I don't want to assume anything. So, um, and the next... Do you know what? I don't actually know. I thought this section came off more easily where there'll be the cards underneath, but I can't see... Yeah, I can't get into that. Um, I'm going to research that a bit more because I'm not anywhere near as familiar with these machines as I am with the 800XL, 600XL. Um, yeah. So we'll have a closer look shortly and just do a little bit of research before you even touch this machine and then we'll check the power supply, make sure we trust it to some degree and then when we're happy we'll try and turn this on. Um, we believe that there is a fault that it won't boot, that's how it's been described, that's why I've paid a reasonable price for this because it's been sold as non-working parts only. I'm hoping this is going to be a relatively straightforward fix um, but we're going to do the research first on the power supply, um, best way of disassembling it and what have you because my familiarity with this particular model of Atari is quite low. So there you have it, I finally got an Atari 800, albeit a broken one. I plan to take this to its logical conclusion, hopefully completing the repair and restoration myself. However, if I fail and need to have assistance from someone more experienced with this hardware, I won't see that as a true failure, as it's the end result that's important, preserving another classic Atari computer and using it to its full potential. Uh, before I leave it, I did remove the retaining screws and take a look at the ROM and RAM cards in this machine, which all seem to be in order. It therefore seems to be a fault elsewhere that's causing it to boot to a black screen. I've sourced an appropriate aftermarket power supply for the machine, which I note is 9 volts AC supply, not DC, so we really have to be careful there. Uh, it's another very important thing to note to carefully label power supplies for retro hardware to ensure no damage is ever done by plugging the wrong one into the wrong machine. So hopefully I'll bring you further details of the work on this machine in later videos. So please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see that or any of my Atari gaming videos. So uh, thanks for watching and take care everyone. Bye for now.